I scrolled all the way to the bottom of the Steam's racing category and bought 50 games from there. Games that no one has ever played, with little to no reviews, and completely dead multiplayer worlds, all adding up to $420. What could go wrong? Well, the first game doesn't even come with its own files. It's been under construction, with major updates coming soon. That was over a year ago. The next game looks really nice though. And that's about it. Karkor has you navigate through a difficult obstacle course with some really, really weird assets. The game has no checkpoints though and only one person, most likely the developer, has managed to complete it. But he forgot to disable the console, so you can just cheat and teleport to the end of the level. And that's the entire game. These types of games are referred to as asset flips, which is when developers throw a bunch of pre-made assets together and call it a game. I'll give each game a personal rating from 1 to 10, and this one gets a 0. Next game, Freelance Trucker Insurance Fraud Edition. From the very first delivery mission, it becomes clear what type of game you're dealing with. There are 14 well-designed levels, each presenting a distinct challenge. Through them, you navigate various types of obstacles, ranging from a normal city to mountain leaps and nuclear facilities. Deliver the load and you'll unlock the next level, but the pay is low, and this is where the insurance fraud comes in. You'll have to replay the level, and this time, cause as much property damage as possible before your truck explodes. You then file an insurance claim and make a lot of money this way. Oddly, the game doesn't offer you anything to buy other than better insurance policies. Regardless, all levels offer a lot of replay value, whether that be delivering loads, causing mayhem, or picking up collectibles. It all adds up to 2 hours of solid fun. The truck is pretty slow, but once you drop the trailer, it becomes incredibly fast, and the driving is surprisingly good, although buggy at times. The game has a certain charm to it with its humor, from job descriptions, billboards, trailers, and even missions themselves. Overall, a simple game, but with a unique experience. 7 out of 10. The next game is called Race, Make Him Finish. Let's start the first level. Three, two, one, zero. zero? Who says that? The sign in front of you immediately throws you into the air. Even the developer is struggling, so why put it there? Pressing the reset button bounces you upwards. You can even fly by spamming it. And the frame rate? I can barely get 30 while using 80% of a good GPU. And the lowest setting doesn't help much either. This is because the game is rendering three other points of views, and throughout my playthrough, I looked at them exactly zero times. The second level appears to crash the game, but actually, it just takes a whole minute to load. The goal is to clear obstacles from a racetrack so the AI drivers can finish the race. The game gives you multiple tools to tackle different types of obstacles and enemies. However, the gameplay is completely obscured by the awful controls and glitchy physics. It's some of the worst I've seen in any game, and it's not helped by the overwhelming amount of debris that doesn't despawn. Not sure if this game is meant to be a joke because even the dev himself can't play it past the third level, so I don't know what he expected from other players. Speaking of players, there aren't any. The game has a leaderboard system and I'm the only person on all 10 levels. The concept is there, but the execution couldn't have been much worse. It's overall a pile of garbage, literally. 8 out of 10 controls according to the game itself. But I have 10 new world records, so 10 out of 10. And it should be noted that I'm not just glossing over games. For almost every game, I'll either finish the single player campaign or explore all the content it has to offer before moving on to the next game. That's probably more than what IGN does for reviewing AAA titles nowadays. Next up, an endless runner. Starting it for the first time and you're immediately spawned into a spike. The game has no physics and the only goal is to go through gates while avoiding the only type of obstacle. The scenery looks awful and somewhat disorienting. Same goes for the music that's just a 2 second loop. This is bad as a free mobile game, let alone a $20 game on Steam. Even the pre-made asset they ripped off is cheaper. 0 out of 10. The next game gives you a garage and money with nothing to buy. There are only 4 tracks that look exactly the same, and as for gameplay, this clip should say enough. The AI spins out all the time and you can't do much to control your slides either. The best thing about this game is its memeable description on Steam. The game features good graphics, easy control, interesting gameplay and unforgettable adventure. The cover art looks nothing like the game and it somehow has 4 positive reviews. I'm sure the developer is behind none of them. 0 out of 10. The next game looks really polished with a functioning online multiplayer. 
but the gameplay couldn't have been much worse. The cars are way too light and lose control for the smallest reasons, whether that be hitting a cone or tapping the brake in anything but a straight line. The main focus of this time attack game are the tracks, which are also heavily flawed. In many of them, you don't even know where you're going. This is because the tracks are procedurally generated. This highlights a big missed opportunity, a track editor, which should have been a no-brainer considering the game supports Steam Workshop. I only found one other person on the daily challenge leaderboard, so we'll never get to see how good the power of racing is in multiplayer. I don't know how you can make a game packed with so many good features but get the core gameplay so horribly wrong. Never mind. Great choice of default character, 3 out of 10. Next, the only free game on this list with god awful physics and handling. They're the most crucial part of any racing game, hence my strong emphasis on it. It doesn't matter how much content you add. If the core gameplay is flawed, then it's not going to work. In this case, you have neither, with only a local multiplayer mode. 1 out of 10. Next game, Truck Simulator in City, featuring 4 game modes, starting with Free Trip where you can aimlessly drive a truck around the city, which looks like a pre-made asset, and a really bad one at that. It's basically a grid and even the traffic cars move like trains. The next mode is Missions, where you simply pick up loads and deliver them to their destination. The mouse pointer disappeared, I can't select the next level, but I somehow got it and now the trailer doesn't spawn in the second level, as if the developers didn't want you to see how unfinished their game is. There are also parking and stunt challenges, you know, the sort of things you would expect from a truck simulator game. The whole game is on drugs, 0 out of 10. Next, a flying game with combat, featuring a career mode with text to speech characters. Having a good jet helps, but the rest of your success depends on you and your piloting skills. Wrong! The tracks don't provide any challenge. They all look and play the same, just with a different rock texture. To win, all you have to do is occasionally press boost and turn. As for the controls, it's very difficult to move in two directions at the same time, which is a deal breaker for this type of game. The single player lacks content and feels repetitive, but it's mostly a finished game. And we'll get to why later. Safe to say the online mode isn't coming out after one and a half years, 2 out of 10. Next up, the first drift focused game, with great retro wave atmosphere and soundtrack. But that's about it, the drifting is way too overpowered, allowing you to take almost every corner flat out, ignoring one of the most basic principles in racing games which is called braking. Hmm. While tracks look different, they're all completely flat and play almost the same. It's a nice game if you just want to chill, but don't expect anything else. 3 out of 10. Next, an apocalyptic survival game with a lazy VR port, so I'll play the free flat screen version instead. The driving is incredibly unresponsive. Same goes for the shooting. The maps are also bland and the missions too repetitive, but it can be fun for a few seconds when everything is working in order, whether that be running away while being attacked from every angle or just shooting down enemies. It's certainly not the worst thing, especially for a free game. Just avoid the horrible VR port on Steam. 2 out of 10. The next game is actually a puzzle game despite being in the racing category. Nothing unusual at this point. The goal is to make the longest possible circuit using the available props. There are 30 boring but somewhat challenging levels that I personally didn't like. Despite being a generic mobile game, it's only available on Steam for $6. Not worth it, 1 out of 10. Next up, another drifting game, using basic polygons as graphics, which somehow manages to look good, and the driving is even better. The physics can be annoying sometimes, but mostly, the handling is predictable and authentic. The car has a limit and will spin out if you push it too hard. You also have to control your slide angle so as not to lose too much speed. And these are good things. It takes effort, but it feels so satisfying and rewarding when you pull a successful drift. You can also control the car in mid-air, but the highlight of this game is the deja vu mechanic. Basically, you drive and then the game creates another version of you who traverses the exact same path you just drove. You can collide with the past version of you, however, you get bonus points if you get close to it. There can be multiple versions of you, which can spice up the gameplay. This simple idea, combined with the right gameplay, is enough to create hours of fun. Deja Drift is one of many games that proves you don't need graphics to make a good game. Sadly, it's been abandoned in a slightly buggy and unoptimized state. Those apart, the only other problem with this game is that it ends, with only 4 maps and soundtracks available. The devs seem passionate about the game and should definitely come back working on it. 
totally recommend you buy 7 out of 10. Next up, we have our first anti-gravity racer, a subgenre that doesn't attract a large audience anymore. This game takes huge inspirations from the F-Zero series with incredibly fast ships and high-speed tracks. The handling is pretty good with its sensitivity being adjustable in the settings. In fact, this is the only game that comes with a proper settings menu, but that's about it. The game offers very little content and has been abandoned for nearly 2 years now, 4 out of 10. Next, another obstacle course ported from mobile. The physics once again make it unnecessarily frustrating. The car simply does not steer at lower speeds, which is like 80% of the time in this type of game. It's almost as if they copy pasted some vehicle physics assets without tuning them at all. We'll get to that later. Now the car rolls over way too easily, but this time at least, the game features checkpoints, along with a reset button. The 20 featured levels are somewhat challenging, but also repetitive and not designed nicely. There's also a survival mode with AI, which gets boring quickly. Aside from being available on Steam, it's also free on mobile, but there are much better time wasters out there, 1 out of 10. Next, another mobile port, and it has the same dreadful driving assets as the previous game. The cars are extremely grippy and have no top speed, allowing you to take literally every corner flat out. The only thing that slows you down is the physics randomly rolling your car over. To top it off, here's a useless car wash mode that makes you question humanity. I don't know why they bothered to put a time attack mode in a game that requires zero skill or attention, and the top 10 times have more than 10 seconds between them. Let's try it out anyways, all I'm doing is holding W and occasionally turning. And that was the world record by 7 seconds? There's no way this is real. So let's try the multiplayer. Is it actually not dead? Those don't look like real player names, so let's grief Sam and see what happens. Yep, they're 100% AI drivers. 0 out of 10 for scummy tactics. Next, a top down view racer with the ability to create tracks. Despite this, the variety is still limited. Obviously, the game is dead, but the racing seems to be chaotic and somewhat fun. There's not much else to say other than the dead meme sound effects. 3 out of 10. Next, a VR flying game where you steer with your head. It's a time attack game where you navigate a tight tunnel. It wants to make you feel like you're in space, but that's what it is. It has an online multiplayer and a basic track creator. Didn't really like its gameplay, but I can't say for sure since I spent a VR headset's worth on so many digital abominations. Speaking of which, here's another. In this drift game, the developer has dumped a bunch of assets into Unity, released it on Steam, and the rest is up to you to figure out. Literally, the car doesn't even slide without you tuning it in the settings. There's nothing else in this shit other than a useless beat game, 0 out of 10. Next, another abandoned early access game, featuring 3 tracks, E-rapes and some of the worst physics and handlings of any racing game. I've played it for less than 30 minutes and that was enough to make a minute long montage of bugs and fails. This is the state of the game after 34 updates consistent throughout 7 months. Like, how do you even forget to put the player's car in gear? There are some interesting ideas here, but it's so messed up, I'll have to give it a 0 out of 10. Next, another endless game, and this time with actual driving physics, but not good ones. Your character falling out is probably the best part of the game, but there's not much else other than a few upgrades and a split screen mode. 1 out of 10. Next, the worst combat racing game. You can fly your vehicle up and down, but the levels lack any verticality whatsoever. In fact, the levels are all exactly the same, just 90 degree corners followed by long straights. There's one unique city level with untextured traffic cars that you can ghost through, and you don't even know where to go. 
you also have infinite ammo, so you can just hold mouse 1 and kill all your opponents on the first straight. That's the entire game. 0 out of 10. The next game won't even open. You have to remove the spaces in the files because the developer forgot to. This game uses the exact same physics asset as the previous drift game. Even the city is mostly the same, and this time featuring Razor's V6 Mustang from Most Wanted. There are other cars, but after some quick maths, I found out that it takes around 6 hours of drifting to unlock the fastest car, which is a Supra, suggesting the developer is only 9 years old. Fortunately, I can instantly access it thanks to Cheat Engine, and it drives exactly the same as the previous car. As it turns out, you can also adjust the car's power to your liking, so why have different cars in the first place? Cursed Supra, 0 out of 10. But not as cursed as the next game, it's called Wrecked Unfair Car Stunts, probably made by Johnny Ginard. It looks like a mobile game, but it's only available on Steam. Starting the first level, the car seems to be slow, but then speeds up when you hit the boxes like... Have you seen a racing game where a wooden box represents nitro or speed boost? There are bombs scattered throughout the levels that can destroy your car. This jump in particular is really difficult. It's extremely easy to under or overshoot it. Thankfully, the game has a checkpoint right before this jump. Which makes it even more impossible because you can't carry enough speed now, even when you reverse. If you reverse. I'm holding the brake button here, but the car keeps moving forward. And now it's stuck, which wouldn't be a problem if the game had a pause menu. I eventually finished this level and moved on to the third one, which has some weird music. And I died despite the car fitting perfectly under the bridge. The rest of the levels are easier and just require a bunch of tries. As you can see, the gameplay is completely 2D, similar to hill climb racing on mobile. Or is it? It's a buggy mess if it's not clear already. The garage button took me back to the first level, where I discovered that by rotating in air you can infinitely glide and go out of bounds. This filter is way too much. It's trying to mask the generic low poly asset, but it's only making them worse. I'm surprised someone bothered to crack such an obscure game, it's not even worth that. Out of 40 levels, I'm the only person to ever make it past the second one. I completed 20 of them before the game softlock and didn't unlock the rest. Johnny has 4 other games on Steam, and that's a rabbit hole I'm not willing to go down to. This was the weirdest game by far, 1 out of 10. But at least it was a game, unlike poly racing. All it has is 3 carts and 2 tracks. The first cart drives fine, until you start turning. It flies into the air and starts endlessly rotating until it lands. The second cart doesn't roll, but it's somehow unstable over a completely flat surface and loses control frequently. The third cart's engine is the only audio in the entire game. It has problem getting into gear and gets stuck easily, but it doesn't matter since there are no game rules. This is by far the worst creation. I don't know how you can mess up this badly when your entire game is just a bunch of pre-made assets. 0 out of 10. Next, another flying game. Hmm, these menus look familiar. Yep, this game is a near exact copy of the flying game at the beginning of the video, just with different planes and tracks. A simple search in Unity Asset Store reveals that both of these games were made using the Airplane Race Creator. This is a fully pre-made and customizable asset that lets you make your own flying game with no coding experience. The previous game at least put some effort reskinning ships and maps. This one, however, is just the entire asset copied and released on Steam. These games should be taken down and don't even deserve a score. Moving on to Maze Workout Urban Lost Solo Car Racer. A game that might damage the hardware? Let's blow up a brand new GPU! Disappointing. The game features 52 mazes, all of which look exactly the same. What you're seeing is what the entire game looks like. Needless to say, the game becomes repetitive after 5 minutes. It recently got an update after over a year, but for who? Looking at Steam charts, I'm the only player. I'm sure these sound effects and bug fixes will totally save the game. Didn't even blow up my PC, 0 out of 10. Next, we have Car Mechanic Simulator at home. There are two cars with barely anything to customize them. You can then drive the car on a racetrack and that's it. It's not a game, 0 out of 10. Next, another endless game where you have to drive around the city and stop at checkpoints, all while being chased by the police. Your car is invincible and the police is slow and fragile, so they're more of a minor inconvenience. 
The physics are quite buggy though, resulting in any collision to have an unpredictable outcome. The cars don't handle too bad on a flat surface, but as per every bad driving game, they become unstable when you add elevation. 2 out of 10. Next, another drifting game, featuring the Unity Acid National Anthem. Despite having multiple tracks and cars, they all feel and play the same. The drift handling is on a whole new level. Sliding hardly slows you down and brakes barely work. Same goes for the nitros. It's just a visual effect and your car doesn't actually accelerate faster. This game's so fake, 0 out of 10. Next up, a dead online game. According to this Steam post, the servers are shut down and the game is unplayable as a result. It used to be a free power-up racer with unique heroes and abilities. Despite this, the devs couldn't even find enough players for testing. The game wasn't really alive to begin with, and now no one can play it or know how good it was. Unfortunate out of 10. The next game is an online-only MMORPG with a top-down view and MLG memes. The servers are up, but the world is populated with bots since no one is playing. The game presents 5 game modes, including racing and drifting. The driving is just okay. The biggest problem is cars losing too much speed when turning. It feels like a finished game with a good amount of polish, but on the downside, there is not much content. The open world map is really small with only 4 racetracks and 1 drift track available. You can't even play the story mode as it requires you to first play one of the online modes. These are somewhat expected considering the game scale and the fact that it's made by 2 people. Noteworthy is the game's retro-futuristic settings, with the art style and soundtrack nicely evoking the atmosphere. It's free on mobile which of course means pay to win microtransactions, but if you ignore that, it's not a bad game. 5 out of 10. Moving on to Funny Road Chase Simulator. I'm struggling to find a funny part in this game, just like you are in this video. It's a smashy road ripoff that's worse in every way. The cops are way too easy to avoid and provide no challenge. That's a car by the way. I managed to levitate it and now I can sit here and achieve infinite score, but that would be a huge waste of electricity. 0 out of 10. Next game, Fake Racing. With 1-bit graphics and VR support. Imagine playing this in VR. Someone actually did. Anyways, the driving feels surprisingly responsive and bug-free, mostly thanks to the increased gravity. The game lacks content though, with only 2 cars and 4 tracks that you can easily cut. It's not worth the price, but the unique driving and visuals can provide fun for 30 minutes. 3 out of 10. Next, Quantum Apex. Starting a race and the game's already broken, and the pause button doesn't work. Apparently, you had to select a car first, and no, oh no. This game has the same driving assets as those two drift games. Combine it with bad track design and you have yourself another fail montage. The game has 9 Hot Wheels style tracks along with 6 game modes that are mostly the same. <sighs> That's a basic racing game template, 0 out of 10. Next, a power up racer with a political theme that I don't understand. This game has the slowest handling I've seen in any game. Seriously, look how slow this corner is. I had to hack it for it to be bearable. You can have up to 64 AI players with the game remaining surprisingly stable, although the combat aspect has very little impact and like it's dead multiplayer, you can mostly ignore it. 2 out of 10. Next up, we have the most expensive game on this list with nearly 50 GB in size, so let's take a deeper look into this one. Made with Unity and immediately into windowed mode. Going into the settings, you can't even change some of the options. Same goes for the nickname in the profile menu, but maybe we can choose an avatar. Nothing is working, not even the escape button, and of course they didn't disable the debugger, that's a game restart already. Back to the main menu, let's go to the garage. That was 20 seconds of loading for a simple garage. Now we have a bunch of cars that are clearly not licensed and they didn't even bother rescaling the models they certainly stole. We can then customize the car, none of these options are working except the custom rims that simply remove the wheels. And now, after 50 seconds of loading, we have a slideshow basically. 
5 frames per second while barely using the GPU. The graphics don't even look that good. I lowered the settings and the game still doesn't run well, but at least it's playable now. The AI crashes, the engine sound is an earache, and is that a piss bottle? The handling is extremely jittery. It's like the car is moving on a square grid, like Big Rigs. Actually, we can compare Big Rigs to this game. If you don't know, Big Rigs is known as the worst commercially sold video game, made in 2003. This game is from 18 years after that, and so far, the only improvements I am seeing are better graphics and having collisions. The car control is somehow worse than Quantum Apex and those drifting games. The tracks are boring and bland if you ignore the generic scenery, and we are lapping the AI in a two lap race! Crossing the finish line and you're a winner, so let's go to the winner's island. I think manually driving to it would have been faster, but eventually, here it is. It's just a map asset that serves no purpose. It looks terrible and somehow using 16 gigabytes of RAM. They didn't even bother changing Unity's default icon. Even the worst games don't do that. Even in worst games you don't get stuck on a flat surface for no reason. Seriously, I'm pressing every button here. The game also has boats, if you can call them that. Starting a boat race and none of the opponents have textures. Nor collisions, nor do they move. And I just realized the game spawned us in the wrong direction. The boat is barely faster than swimming. And did I tell you all cars have the same performance? Look at the collisions on this track. And now this one. You might think these are just pre-made assets, but even the worst assets don't put trees in the middle of a track. Which means somebody actually made this. And guess what? It used to be even worse. I found a video of this game where cars don't even have a reverse gear. Considering its age, I'd say this is the worst racing game ever made. The laziest asset dumps on this list are better than this thing. It was originally called Big Rigs 2. You want proof? Here it is. Almost the same game as you can see. Bad jokes aside, the game has been abandoned for over a year now, and despite this, they raised the price to $30 and are still promoting it. Thankfully, their marketing is just as good as their programming. It's clearly a scam. Just like Big Rigs was, the content in the trailer aren't even in the game. I'm refunding it minus 1 out of 10. Now, let's look at an alright game to return to sanity. For now at least. Rock and Rush is a survival racing game with a multiplayer focus. It supports up to 4 players locally and 8 players online. Too bad the game never managed to fill even one lobby. It's a simple game with 4 cars, 4 tracks and a couple of weapons. Even though the tracks are simple, they all play differently and the car handling is good enough. The physics however are inconsistent and randomly roll you over. The game can be fun for a few hours, but it crashes when loading one of the campaign levels and the multiplayer is completely dead. If you have friends however, this game is absolutely worth the $1 price tag, 5 out of 10. The next game is also a multiplayer combat racer, but this time it's not even in the alpha stage. First of all, there is no sound, and every time you shoot your camera starts rotating. Why? They could have said it to not move at all. Did they really think this would not be disorienting? There is also the square grid handling, like Big Rigs and its sequel. You can't even turn if you are not holding gas or brakes. The cars also tip over too easily with no reset button. Starting the first level, it says get the spheres, but you can't. The next one looks like a basic island asset, then there is this obstacle course level that ends after one straight, and the rest have some weird roads with no checkpoints or anything. They don't even have smooth geometry. This type of mapping using flat surfaces was outdated after the PS2 era. This, combined with unrefined driving model, is the main reason as to why cars easily lose control when facing elevation changes in many of these games. In this one, you don't even need that. This thing is on par with Dark Air, Poly Racing and Big Rigs 2. I would really like to know the thought process behind half the games on this list, especially these four. Indie game devs have the advantage of not having to deal with out-of-touch people in big companies, so what happened? It's understandable to make a bad game, but these, you can't even call them that. Next, the first rally game. The handling is actually not too bad and there is a bit of authenticity in it, but any collision and you're flying. Took me a couple of attempts to complete the first stage. And that's a world record already? Wait a minute. What, what the fuck? What did, what did I just experience? I, 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 ha I haven't even done anything yet, and I'm already willing to, to death myself. What the fuck? I genuinely cannot play this anymore. No, no, fuck this. And this 
is far from the worst game on this list. It's not optimized and only offers 5 stages that look and play the same. 2 out of 10. The next game was taken down from Steam the day I bought it. Understandably so. It's just a generic cash grab mobile game. It has 3 modes. Free ride, where you can wander around the smallest open world in video game history, a traffic racer ripoff where you can just hold W and not hit anything, and a demolition derby mode that you can cheese with a helicopter. 0 out of 10. Next, a futuristic combat racer with extremely basic handling. So basic that you can just ride every wall. There's literally no reason to press brakes, nor is there consequences for not slowing down. The weapons are way too overpowered and stop the cars dead in their tracks in a game where keeping momentum is crucial. There are two other modes that also get boring quickly. These modes were removed in an update that came out of nowhere, with no patch notes, and it corrupted the progress of the only person who played the game, 1 out of 10. Next, a LEGO Sandbox game. It only features two maps and the physics are inconsistent. However, you can add boss to the level and turn it into a demolition derby. And this is oddly satisfying. There's something about the parts coming off the cars, the physics sending everything flying, and just a pile up of Legos. Regrettably, this game along with its dead multiplayer is probably going to get DMC'd off the planet. It doesn't have much else to offer, but the Lego clusterfuck alone makes it worth a 4 out of 10. Next, an endless zombie game. You run over zombies and occasionally drive to checkpoints in relatively small maps. That's the entire game. It's simple and finished, but I didn't really like its driving or game formula and got bored after 20 minutes. 2 out of 10. Next, we have the oldest game on this list. It looks dated even for 2012, but the driving is pretty good. For racing at least. You'd expect there to be a derby or arena mode in a game with monster trucks, but there isn't. They could have used any car and the game would have been the same. The best thing about it is the track variety. There are around 20 of them, each with a unique theme and multiple layouts. The campaign however is way too stretched out. There are 10 series and each takes around an hour to complete. There aren't many trucks to choose from and the game becomes repetitive quickly. In fact, less than 5% of players have completed the first series. The game also makes it easy to lose all your progress. These strange decisions detract from what could have been an average game, 4 out of 10. Next, we have Mario Kart with dummies. It only comes with 3 tracks and 4 power-ups, but this game has something the others don't. An actual story mode. Your Tao the dummy, working every day just to not get recycled. But the town is hosting a tournament, and the winner will never have to work again. So you pass the driving test and go collecting buttons in order to pay the tournament's entry fee. But that doesn't cut it, so you go meet some friends and they help you collect golden buttons instead. It seems like a kid friendly game, so jump scare warning. The rabbit takes all your friends and hangs them. You escape with the gold, enter the tournament, win the qualifiers and beat the final boss. Now all you have to do is take your trophy. After a tense police chase, you finally manage to escape back to the factory. The credit rolls telling you to stay tuned for future content. It's been two years. Apart from that, the game doesn't have much else to offer other than a local multiplayer mode. The tracks are all flat which is a big sign for a bad handling model. The cars turn way too much and lose lots of speed as a result. The only highlight of this game was the story mode. It was short but it attempted something unique and didn't just copy paste the same race over and over again. And for that alone, 4 out of 10. Next, another obstacle course. First off, the game is running at 2 times the speed, but it doesn't matter. You can beat every level and avoid obstacles just by driving on the sidewalk. Great level design followed by great driving physics. Of course it's using the same copy paste asset with no tuning. The checkpoints stop working after a certain level and one of them is impossible to beat. Recently, the dev claims to have lost the project files and is therefore unable to fix it. This is despite the game not having a single update a full year after its launch. 0 out of 10. Next, we have SnowRunner from Wish. It's just a very basic off-road truck delivery game. There is not much else to say other than it has better drift physics than most of the drifting games on this list and the punishment for going into water is restarting the game. 0 out of 10. Next, a very basic platformer with unresponsive and unpredictable driving. 
Most of the levels, however, are somewhat well designed and fairly challenging. I managed to finish it without being frustrated or bored to death, which is a rare thing on this list. The game doesn't offer anything else though with less than 20 levels, 2 out of 10. The next game is multiplayer only with no servers, 0 out of 10. Just kidding, I joined their discord and the dev hooked me up with a server. In fact, he was the only one to respond out of the 9 games that had a discord linked. Anyways, the game features a track editor which looks like a basic unity map builder. It's way too complicated to work with for average user. And while the object variety is fine, the track pieces are not customizable and have flat geometry. Combine that with bad physics and you have a rough and bumpy driving experience. The game features race and derby modes with clear inspirations taken from the racing in GTA. It has more potential and the developer is still working on it, but at the moment, 2 out of 10. And while it might not be fair to play a multiplayer game solo, I don't think I can find anyone. 9 months ago I gave away around 10 keys for another game, but only one person made it past an hour of playtime. And that was a good game. With these, no chance. Moving on, Zombo Drive is very similar to Long Drive. Set in an endlessly generated post-apocalyptic world, you drive, drive, and occasionally reach landmarks where you can resupply. The game is bare bone and unfinished, with even the zombies being infrequent. But for the most part, it works. There's a base for a good game here, but it's been abandoned for over a year now, 2 out of 10. Next, the Great Race. There's absolutely no racing in this game, only two tagging modes that can be played in 6 arenas with 7 special characters. It sounds like a fun concept for a multiplayer game, but you can only play it with one other person locally, with the AI being easily exploitable. Abandoned for 5 years now, 2 out of 10. Next, Cygnus Pizza Race. A fast-paced racer with the small twist of picking up the right pizza toppings before the end of the race, which honestly doesn't add much to the gameplay. Your opponents are quite slow, even on the hardest difficulty, so most of the challenge comes from getting a perfect score rather than winning the race. The game features 20 unique tracks, which is the best part of it along with a kick-ass soundtrack. The handling is pretty standard with a notable lack of a sensitivity slider, which is mitigated with the air brakes, but they're not powerful enough for some corners. The camera takes too long to follow the ship and some tracks have clipping issues, otherwise not bad, 5 out of 10. The next game has 3 modes, race, with no indication for where to go, so I'm just gonna follow the opponent, One eternity later. and he doesn't seem to know where he's going either. The second mode is free ride, self explanatory, and finally the tour mode, where you just spectate the AI driver going nowhere. Very exciting assets, 0 out of 10. Next. Drift Type-C, a real physics driving game. Despite being its main selling point, this game doesn't offer much in terms of realism. No game really does, but they don't have to. All you need is a detailed handling model with controls that translate into a pleasant driving experience. And in that regard, this is the best game on this list. The driving is intuitive and the cars are predictable. They have an actual limit and are always on the edge, so you can't just hold W and win every race without any effort. You need to pay attention, which means this won't be an easy game, and that's why it features a driving school, along with lots of race, rally, and drift events. The content is virtually endless. Not only the game features a large world, but also a track editor, along with a fair selection of vehicles. This game came as a surprise. It has a lot more depth than you would expect from an obscure indie game, and there might be a reason. I've seen a few games that use strikingly similar assets. Regardless, it's still a unique enough game and comes with its own downsides. Those include useless AI, poor optimization and frequent stutters, flat geometry, UI so confusing I don't know how to save a track or progress the story mode, and a general lack of polish. If you like the driving aspect of driving games, this is the game for you, but otherwise, I can't recommend it at its current state for $20. It's unlikely to receive more updates considering it peaked at only 3 players, which would be a shame given its huge potential, 6 out of 10. The next game also tries to be authentic, but ends up being unnecessarily frustrating. The steering is way too sensitive, and combined with low rear grip, it makes up for a rough driving experience. Even the rubber banding AI is struggling, and any collision with them will result in a spin out. It only features a few tracks and the final level seems to be unbeatable on the beta male difficulty, which implies the developer didn't test it and is therefore a chad alpha male, 1 out of 10. The next game is online only, literally. It hasn't been out for 2 years and the servers are shut down already. 
It's understandable if your game doesn't make enough money, but to make a single player component completely inaccessible, what are you, Ubisoft? Next, another car mechanic simulator ripoff. But for some reason, I can't select a wrench. I pressed every key and searched everywhere with no luck. Normally, I would look up a guide or a gameplay video, but for these games, there aren't any. Surprisingly, I found a few videos for this one, but they're all on a different version. So I decided to hack the game and try one of the cars anyways. It feels like the same vehicle physics assets as those drift games, and this tiny track is all you have to free roam around, 0 out of 10. Now on to the final game. It's the same thing. You already know how bad the games that use these assets are, and they're somehow even worse here. Any collision, any bump, and you're upside down. The AI crashes and makes the combat aspect pointless. I'm not even gonna play through this one, but why are these games so similar? The answer takes us back to the first game that didn't even launch. Steam allows you to download older versions of any game, and this one is also the exact same thing. Same menus, same physics, same sound effects, same objects, same everything. I wonder how so many people can come up with the same game? Yep, this is made by the same person who made the airplane race creator. Once again, this asset allows you to make your own racing game with no coding experience required. So as you can see, making a bad game requires very little effort. And there are probably more that I missed. But enough of that, let's move over to conclusion. 60 games. Obscure, abandoned, and dead. I expected disappointment and was still disappointed. I don't know what most of these developers were thinking when publishing these games. It costs $100 to do so. Did they really think they'll make it back? Did they think their game was good enough for even a single person? Out of 60 games, I gave 30 of them a rating of 0, which means I don't think they even qualify as video games. Most of the rest, I would understand if they were the first project for a beginner developer, but that still doesn't justify putting it up for sale. If you think that's too negative, just add 1 or 2 to every rating because nowadays a 7 out of 10 is seen as mediocre. There were a few hidden gems though, mainly Freelance Trucker and Deja Drift. Both of these games looked lackluster in the trailer and were towards the bottom of the steam sorting, but in the end, they turned out to be surprisingly impressive, buried deep under the pile of turds. I mostly avoided endless runners and only picked vehicle based games, so it's even worse than that. I could keep scrolling upwards and do this again, if I ever financially recover from it, but it was an interesting experience, resulting in just over 60 hours of playtime. I expected more, but only two games ended up providing more than two hours of content without becoming blatantly repetitive. I'll put a link to this spreadsheet down in the description if you want links to every game or more stats. I thought I've seen the worst with Emperor and Dark Years, but these games just set a new low. And this is still nowhere near the bottom. So how about a racing game with a $3 million budget? <laughs>